first, I guess we'll start with um, just telling us a little bit about yourself and and your educational background. Okay, well, Kate McCarthy, I live in central New South Wales, Australia, which is a big farming community. And in a town of 40,000, I basically grew up with a family who was very strong in the community. So felt very much that I had to follow the, the norm. So went into business for myself when I was made redundant in an, in an administration role and created my own business. I've always considered myself entrepreneurial and, and that was just the way I could lead back into it. I self-educated in a lot of things. I didn't actually go to uni. I uh, decided that travelling the world was my uni and found that to be a great journey because I learned so much from it. And by doing that, I also gained a lot uh, maturity-wise, experience-wise. So education to me is actually not um, – it's more common sense and um, an initiative, creating the right mindset to, to be who you want to be and to achieve what you want to achieve. So I'm married. I have two young children, uh, two and four, who are delightful but also very big challenges at the moment. <laughs> so a business with, with young children and a husband who works a lot of hours in an agricultural world has certainly been a journey for me, and it's also what I actually work with other people on. Okay, great, great, great. Awesome, awesome. So this is not something that you just decided one day to try. It's something that you've been meaning to do for a while. Yeah, I um, I certainly was looking for something online whilst I had my first child. I actually did venture into a couple of businesses and having and more multi level marketing. And really, you should listen to your gut instincts because I knew it wasn't for me. And so, what I was looking for was an ability to do uh, have a business online where I could connect with people like me, but not have to get out there and recruit face to face. And that's what took me online to, to search for something that could give me that. Okay, so great. My, yeah, my second child came along and I was out and I found that with, with Moab. Great, great. And, 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 of course, this allows you, you know, to stay at home, work from home, you know, be with your children, of course. Absolutely. Awesome. That's appropriate. Yeah. Okay, so um, how did the idea of, uh, to enter the field of Internet marketing uh, come into your mind and what big problems have you uh, did you face when you were just starting out? Yes, so internet marketing wasn't, like most people, we really don't look for internet marketing, but it was at that time when ads were allowed on Facebook that I kept seeing the option. And having been in online marketing, not online marketing, in MLM, I was looking at ways of promoting my business online at the time. And then I happened to click on a Facebook ad that was a MOBE ad. And it opened my mind to what could be done with a business online and understood the franchise model and that really appealed to me and the leverage side of it. Right. So the challenges with that was I had no experience and what drew me to MOBE was the coaching. Okay. Especially being a, a, a business success coach myself, I really wanted to, I really liked that idea of having coaching and the other challenges were, yeah, just finding the time to learn a whole new industry whilst I was looking after a baby and then, of course, going back to work part-time. So the, they weren't just challenges. They became wins as well because I was able to do it alongside. Right, of course. Awesome. And uh, for those who don't know what MOBE is, um, it stands for My Online Business Education and it's a company that has grown since 2011 um, um, and it's, it's currently uh, more than a $100 million company at this point. Um, so we'll talk more about MOBE as we go along with the interview. Um, so uh, are, are you into product launches or do you do more of the service side of the business with internet marketing, like offering your services as a coach? And um, at the same time, what market research do you do before you actually offer this kind of service or product? Good question. Uh, initially, I wasn't into product launch. I was focused on the affiliate marketing side, and I did that till I got my head around it. And you mentioned me as a coach. It, it was actually that was something that I struggled with was separating my coaching from my affiliate marketing. Now I I don't need to separate it. It all kind of merges in together. So the product launch as such, what I do is. I look at what my target audience needs, well, what they want, what are their challenges, 
and then I look at how I can answer those or solve those challenges in something that they would want to read or see or listen to. So creating a product based on what, you know, what can help them. The way that I look at doing that is I either I review what other people are commenting on in groups, or what, what their questions are. Google search is a big friend. <laughs> it's um, <Yeah. laughs> the best way to research is Google. But the other way that I've also done it uh, in my own um, business coaching, and I'm also going to then duplicate that in my MOB coach, uh, my MOB side, my, my marketing side, is to actually interview people. It may not be in this structure, but it may be. It might be in a discovery call, but in a survey style. So what I did is I went out and I actually put a survey together and approached my target audience and asked them what are they challenging, what are they having as a challenge, what what would help them move forward. Right, and that's that's really a great advice, you know, to do surveys. Um, and it's so easy now, you know, you just go to Google Forms and you can set up your survey, right? That's Absolutely. The Google Forms is one option and another option for free was WooForms, which is what the one I used. They're both great products. WooForms, Woo awesome, awesome. Okay, and um, um, what are the precautions that we must keep in mind when doing, um, you know, these kind of launches or, you know, offering your services? Uh, precautions would be to be um, not to be too broad because when we're marketing, we, you know, if we market to everyone, there's a big chance we'll get no one. So to be clear on who you're marketing to, we may be in affiliate marketing, that doesn't mean we can't be focused on a target audience. Right. So to know who you're marketing to helps you find those those pain points, those challenges, and helps you find the solutions. So that was my um, coming into it as a newbie. I wasn't particular about my target audience. I was too broad, so I wasn't hitting anyone. Right. So once you do become clear on who you're marketing to, you're then able to connect with them, and and that's where the – and marketing is all about connection. Okay. It's about relating to other people. So you're taking away from the me story to the you story, and and that's when people start relating and responding. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's okay. So for the newbies, what you recommend is for them not to focus, let's say, so much on the cash or on on the payouts, but more on on the market, on on the people that they're trying to help. Right. That's it. Exactly. If you look at the leaders in any marketing field, they they're looking at how they can serve others, what they can do for others to succeed, how they can help them get through any struggles, and they're giving them solutions, whether it be a video training, an e-book, uh, it's, it could be an e-report. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. You'll find that anyone succeeding in this business is offering value. Right, right. Oh, awesome. And um, so you're very active doing online webinars. You do like about, let's say, three per week, right, or something like that? Uh, I do, well, three per day, three times a week at the moment, full wow. mode so it, it, on that's, particular areas. Wow, that's that's extremely active. So, what do you recommend, um, um, or what's the biggest motivational force that helps you to do this kind of activity? I actually uh, ask for more webinars because it helps me connect with more of uh, the mode partners. And being a coach, I'm also coaching with mode partners every day as well. But the reason I love doing it and I want to do it is because it helps other people on their journey. It helps them grow as a person and also as a marketer. And right. if I can share my experience in a little way yes. and help a person get over any struggles, well, that's that's made my day. Right. <laughs> awesome. Great. Um, yeah, and that's that's really, you know, that's really exemplary for, for someone who's just starting out who probably hasn't ever done a webinar ever in their life. Um, and you do these three times a day, you know, so this is um, a level of success that many have not achieved, you know. And so so moving on um, to my next question, I see that there's some people that, that sort of get stuck um, with blogging only. What suggestions w would you like to give to all of those newbies who are trying to find their path, what is the right path in the online industry? Okay, so with blogging, yeah. So back to back again to the target audience. I, I can't be clear enough about knowing who you're marketing to, and the blogging area is to me even more important to be finite with your niche. And 
that's where you really get to know them and, and know what they're, they're struggling with because what we're putting in our blog is is going to certainly help us be found if we're using words that those, that our, that audience is putting into a search engine. But with our blogging, the other thing, value is going to be your biggest thing. So if we can add value to someone's life with a solution or with some, just it might be a tidbit. It might it doesn't have to be the answer to someone's solution, I mean, someone's problem every yeah. time. It could be the fact that, hey, I'm going through this today. How are you going? It could be that I found this awesome photo and this quote really resonated with me. It's it's your it's an online journal and that's that's how blogs started. And the, the beauty is that it is you. It's your information that you're sharing with the world. So be you. And, and I think that's where we do get stuck is that we're trying to copy what everyone else is doing, but we forget that we've got our own unique personalities. And, you know, we don't go into a school well, we do go into a schoolyard hoping everyone likes us, but what we find is that we're drawn to the people who are the best for us and we're the best for them. So why is it any different when we go into a business world? If we can't be ourselves, then we're not being authentic with, with you know, our future, our purpose and the people that we're going to connect with. Right, of course. Awesome, yeah. And and I feel I just want to share also too how um, um, I've been able to get on some calls in MOBE on these daily calls that MOBE has for their members. I believe they have up to seven calls per day, each last half an hour. And I've been able to get on some calls where it's just me and Kate. And um, I've been able to get a personal review for my blog and she's really helped me a lot. Um, she's given me reviews and tips to get my blog to where it is actually um, now. It, it's grown really quick within two to three months, so. It certainly has, the changes are fantastic. And it's more of you on there now too. Right, exactly, yeah. So I really implemented yeah. those tips that, that you've given me. Um, so the next question I have is, um, is sort of the SEO part. It's a very frightening word for some people. Um, the SEO, um, I know that you're very niched and that's a great way to approach SEO because a lot of people think, you know, the more traffic they get, the, the more sales they get or something like that. But how do you approach SEO in, in your particular case? I'm clear about who I'm marketing to and I look at it in a couple of different ways. I look at my blog as a whole. So I, I'm looking at who I'm wanting to market to. So I'm using keywords um, and not just word, like keyword doesn't mean one word. It can mean a number of words, so long tail keywords. So I'm looking at who I want to attract to my blog. What are they, what are they going to be putting in a search engine? So I do that as a whole. And then with my articles, I then focus on the actual article and use words that are going to relate to that article. Now, I do that from my side. And SEO scared me a heck of a lot when I first started as well. I and I actually had someone do it for me. So I actually outsource that as well. So I use the adage that, you know, outsource your weaknesses, concentrate on your strengths. And they were getting my blog out further than I could ever, ever right. know. It can become as big as you want or as, as finite as you want as well. Right, of course. And that's great advice, you know, for somebody just starting out. You know, don't don't be afraid to shell out some cash for someone who knows what they're doing on something that you're not so good at. You know, if, if you're good with uh, content, with creating good content, but you're not so good with the technical side of WordPress, for example, then, you know, hire someone to help you, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And consistency with when you um, when you're using search engine optimization, consistency is also going to be key. You know, because the more you're you're consistent with your blogging and getting your information out there, the more Google appreciates that as well. And then is also keeping an eye on what your keywords are doing. That they look at the the layout of the site. Everything it's a holistic world in in blogging. We right. think if we put one blog post out there, yay, we'll go and do that. It's going to be seen we've got the right keywords. But it's all about interaction, right. even if we can't see that interaction. Right, right, right. That is so true. Um, and that's really what's helped me also to, uh, to get even more, char uh, more, more traffic that's targeted because that's really the goal. You know, you can get a ton of traffic, but if it's not targeted, then, you know, it's really not going to help you in any way. No. And the long tail is great advice. There's, there's so many people that look over long tail. And so yeah. just by focusing on long tail, you can leverage um, a lot of results that, you know, a lot of people are missing out on. Well, that's it. If someone finds your long tail keyword by putting it in a search engine, they're, they're looking for it. 
you're going to have an audience that is prime. And if you answer their question or that you solve their problem, you've got them. Right. Okay, so it's you know, work from home is is not going to get you your your really hungry searches. But if it's work from home with a two and a four year old, and just say someone put that in, <laughs> and something that says how you can do it, well then that person's going to see you in a light that you know what you're talking about. I'm going to follow you. And yeah, you're kind of creating that go to expert. That's a really you know broad example. But it's the more that we can answer their question and preempt what their question is, it's not a, you know, a mainstream, we're really going to find that niche market. Yes, 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 exactly. Um, so you're very much into the coaching business, as uh, we mentioned before. What are some tips that you have for those starting out, um, you know, starting a coaching slash mentoring business? What tips do you have? Going back to being clear again on who you're marketing to, first of all, because that's going to help you be very clear with your message to that market. And it's it's great to, to be out there and saying I'm a coach and I work with mums in business, but what can you do to help those people? You know, what are they going through? So, see, it all comes back to your avatar. It all comes back to your target audience and knowing what they're having, what, what they want, what, they, what they're really wanting to do to propel themselves forward. And it's... Um, if you can offer something that attracts them in that way, so with, so just say, for example, I work with mums in business in my coaching business and what if they can't get an idea from their head to the computer? Okay, that's something that I've, I want to focus on. And a lot of people, they've got this great idea, they've got the whole, you know, they've mapped it out in their mind, they might have mapped it out on paper, but they can't get it into a business. You know, right. how do I do that next step? So... Knowing who you're marketing to, what's your message to those people? Uh, taking the time to really map out what you can offer them. So it's back to the same as our avatar and online marketing. Their strengths, their weaknesses, and out of their weaknesses, you might be able to pull one thing out and create something that attracts them. From that, you can then um, create a product, whether it's a free video training series or just an ebook. But then you're also able to touch base with them and offer them a discovery um, discovery call to have that one-on-one -on -one and offer them value. So so coaching is no different, and I look at this in every business. Mm -hmm. You know, a dress doesn't just go and get clothes and put it there most most of the time, <laughs> depending on the clothes, I suppose. They know the market they're marketing to. You know, they know the age range. They know the, the dollar range that they're willing to spend. They know the style of clothes that they're interested in. They look at the season that they're um they're, they're stocking so we're, we're looking at it all comes back to the basics yeah if we know who we're talking to we know what to give them although if we don't know what to give them then we sit down and go well 99 percent of the time our target audience is us so if someone's going into a coaching mentoring business uh that's not so far from the truth either so i work with mums in business i'm a mum in business so what am i having as a challenge today what can i help someone else with Okay, that might be balancing mum world with business world. What can I do to help that person get through that? Okay, well, what strategies can I help them with? So it's it's very much on par across the two. Wow. And, and being clear on your, your market and your message. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's great advice, really. And so um, moving on to the next question, the online industry um, – it's really in a boom for the past few years, and um, let's say five, six years ago, it was it was awkward to say that, hey, I'm an entrepreneur or something like that. You know, people would be like, okay, the, you're a slacker or something. <laughs> people, that's how people looked at it. But now it's sort of, you know, it's grown to be very popular, and um, and it has a very strong identity. Um, so, what do you think? How is this profession going to survive in the future? And what do you plan to do uh, after, let's say, five years down the line? I actually think uh, it's actually going to get stronger uh, because of of the changes in our real world and the structure of businesses or, or jobs out there. Um, I agree with you. People didn't know what it was. To me, entrepreneurship actually was, was someone who was more like Richard Branson. It wasn't someone who came up with a business idea and, and went with it. Um, it is very broad now that anyone can be an entrepreneur. And if you, I see it going down the track that, if you've got a vision strong enough and you're willing to go for it, well, then you're considered an entrepreneur now. 
if you're going to be an entrepreneur, then once again, you have to be clear on who you're working with. Who are you marketing to? But you're also then going to be consistently keeping on top of the game and, and knowing what they're, where they're at at any time. So you're looking at uh, entrepreneurs such as in, in the online marketing industry. Look at Russell Brunson, for example. You know, he's always on top of it. He has a focus. We know who his target audience is. It's entrepreneurs wanting to capture people into their market. So he focuses on capture pages, um, testing, and products that can help people do that. Um, Matt Lloyd in our business in Mobe is always looking at ways that he can keep affiliate um, partners on the ball. How, how can he make the most for them? But how can he also offer something for people outside the business to come into the business? So entrepreneur, um, entrepreneurship, I think, is going to grow as people want to control their own lives and control the freedom of choice. It's certainly, it's like anything, isn't it? it? It's going to attract the people who are willing to step out of their comfort zone and go for their goal with, with absolute passion. Okay. Yeah, those, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I answered the whole question there. <laughs> no, that's a great answer, yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. And, you know, um, I've seen there's a lot of, like, you know, those, those people that you mentioned, Matt Lloyd, Russell, um, they... They're actually focusing a lot on video marketing now too, so you know yeah. that's, that's growing too. Find mm -hmm. finding a, a strategy that that is going to connect and suit you. Like it's no good. Like it's great to practice and try things that are new, and you'll get better. That's you know we tr know that as kids. Um, but really find something that you resonate with and are passionate about as well. You can always learn new strategies and implement them as you go, but get good at one, and focus on becoming great at that. And then when you're ready to add in extras, well, then that's the time to do it. And the other thing I was just thinking about with entrepreneurship, no entrepreneur has really made it. If you look at the leaders in our field without having a mentor around them, whether that's an individual mentor or coach or whether it's a mastermind around them as well, they've always rubbed shoulders with the like-minded people, with the people who have trodden the boards that they want to tread. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's sort of what we're doing over here. <laughs> <In this. laughs> You know, it's essential. Yeah, you know, um, you know, it it doesn't have to be at an event so expensive. You know, it can be something like this. You know, you're trying to contact people, but you do actually want to get to those events of, um, as a goal. Uh, but when you're just starting out, you might not be able to. <laughs> no, well, we've got social media has changed that so dramatically that you can not the flogger product groups, but there are groups out there that are actively supporting each other. It, there are masterminds around us at any time that are free and all you have to do is interact and, and add value and share. Right, and exactly. You can get your own or you can jump, jump into someone else's. Yes. Just find it in your niche or in it might be not your niche, it might be people who are doing the same thing as you but um, in parallel niches but they're entrepreneurial, they're willing to grow and share and, uh, and through that you'll also build up resources of, of future business partners as well. Right, of course. Okay. So the last question I have would be, um, what are your future goals and um, what is your message for my awesome readers and viewers? My future goals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> lots of goals, so I'll pick one. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to basically, to, to create the freedom and choice, not only in my life but in my, my clients' lives, to, to be able to give them the strategies to, to do that themselves. Uh, I love how I love my, my words throughout my whole life have always been control and freedom. So it's funny that I've come into a business where I can actually attain that and show people how they can also get it. And that's not airy-fairy broad. That, that's basically finding your passion, using your new, unique skills and, and really knuckling down and going towards those goals. And um, a tidbit for, for readers and thank you guys for reading this or, or watching the video and um, I've really loved developing a relationship with Onlifer. It's been awesome. So my tidbit is to be consistent with what you do. It's, it's something that we all start off, we give it a go and then we might get disillusioned and stop. But if you are really passionate about what you want to achieve and, uh, and clear about what you want to achieve, consistency is going to be your best friend. It really is. The, yeah, that's great advice. You know, to be consistent is the best advice that 
I've heard from from all of all of the big bloggers, all all of the successful bloggers. You know, Ray Higdon. They all say you you have to be consistent, and you're not going to be able to write. You know, let's say three articles per day when you're starting out because you might have other things to attend. But you know, if if it's twice a week, three times a week, you know, you want to keep it like that. You don't want to change that too much. Absolutely, yes. Set a frequency and and stick to it, and I'd offer value in that that forum. Yes, of course. Great. Um, so I just want to thank you, um, Kate. Uh, you know, for joining me for this awesome interview, and um, my pleasure. You've done a great job, and um, I'm gonna put a link uh to your website at the bottom of this video too when I post it, so the viewers okay. can go and check you out as well. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Onlifri, and um, all the best. You you're really on an awesome ride there. Thank you. Okay, guys. Until next time.